Can you back it up if it's flat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's up? Some of you guys are looking at me like you've never seen a Vietnamese chick hold a microphone outside a karaoke night. <laughs> you know, karaoke and Hello Kitty, that's like crack to little Asian girls. <laughs> Pachaco! <laughs> I need you in my life. <laughs> I am Vietnamese, I am Vietnamese. I try to represent for my people when I'm up here. I don't want to be a negative stereotype. It's tough. I'm not lying to you guys when I tell you guys my mom had a nail salon for 15 years. <laughs> Does anyone have a cheese grater and a gas mask I can borrow? <laughs> My dad was an engineer. He's really, really good at math. And uh, I just got into three car accidents in the past six months. What's up? <laughs> Buckle up, bitches. Asian driver. <laughs> I can't even make this up. <laughs> First car accident I got into, I was driving and I got hit by an unlicensed 16-year-old driver and her drunk dad. That is alcoholism and commitment. <laughs> He's like, baby, get your permit, get in the car, we're going to the bar. <laughs> Second car accident I got into, I was driving and I got hit by an illegal immigrant with no car insurance. The Mexicans got quiet, all right. <laughs> Pinche chinita. <laughs> I'm not being mean, they're illegal. We get into the car accident, get out of the car, almost sir, maybe we should report this. Car insurance, report this. True story, him and his wife looked at each other. His wife picked up her purse and ran away. She was like, ba -da -ba -bum -ba, ba -da -ba -bum. I'm like, come back and pay for this. Third car accident I got into, I was driving on the freeway in a rural area and I hit a black bear with my Honda Civic. That's right, I'm taking Asian driving to the next level. <laughs> killing animals. All my friends got to mess with me. They're like, dude, you killed Yogi Bear. How could you tell if it was so dark outside? How could you tell that it was a black bear? How could you tell that it was black? I'm like, that's easy. When I called the cops, they didn't do smack. <laughs> oh, you know if it was a polar bear. <laughs> they would have filled out all the paperwork called the polar bear's family. <laughs> you guys can laugh at that. That joke is about the cops being racist, okay? <laughs> Hashtag Black Bears Lives Matter. <laughs> it's true, I am not racist. If there's two things I hate in this world, it's racism and the Korean people, okay? <laughs> they are filthy little creatures, aren't they? Get out of my liquor store! Get out of my country! Learn how to speak Spanish like the rest of us, okay? <laughs> this is America. <laughs> America, heck yeah! <laughs> I do love America. I've actually been overseas to perform for the troops. I went to the Middle East, Iraq, and Kuwait. And so thank you for being able to support the troops. <laughs> I learned a lot when I went over there. I didn't know anything about the military. I learned a lot. Um, I went on a military plane for the first time, a C-130. A little bit different than Delta, a little bit different. <laughs> there was a lot of soldiers packed in there. Some of the comedians were complaining about the vibrations. I started getting turned on. I was like... <laughs> Are we almost there yet? Because I am. This is the best plane ride ever! I was like staring at the sergeant, leaning back, getting high on diesel. I was like, ooh. This is nice. I went to another base. Gotta give it up for the soldiers. Ten months in the desert, one porta potty, okay? It was mostly guys, and there was piss everywhere, guys. What the heck? There was piss on the wall and the ceilings. Men, you have a nozzle you can point, okay? What's going on here? Ladies, we're a little bit better at this, right? We can pee crouched over in high heels, drunk, right? <laughs> Crouching tiger hidden toilet. <laughs> You're like texting, you got your coach bag. <laughs> Multitaskers, okay? <laughs> I went to another base and I had to take a group shower with the other female soldiers. I got excited, I'm like, maybe I'll have my first lesbian experience, right? <laughs> Uh, ladies, why is it always the woman who shouldn't be is the most naked in the shower? <laughs> I was in the corner minding my own business, all of a sudden Chewbacca walks up. <laughs> she had those like long, like National Geographic boobs. She put... <laughs> she had her talent toenails and she put them up on the bench in the shower. She's like, oh my God, are you the comedian from the show? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> her bush looked like Bin Laden's beard, okay? <laughs> 
Okay, I think I found the terrace. <laughs> I did not get to have my lesbian experience. I am married though. What's up ladies? Steady dick, I trapped a man, I'm excited. <laughs> I got a good guy, he's got a job. I'm no longer dating men that beat me, woohoo. <laughs> yes. My hubby is a nerd, yes! He was an engineer and now he's an IT guy. He is a nerd, okay? He is so nerdy, his friends didn't believe he had a girlfriend when we first started dating. I had to put a picture of myself up in his office. I'm like, look, I'm real. <laughs> It's not just a Japanese anime character is jerking off to every day. I'm a real person. I'm real. Yes. Um, a lot of comedians talk bad about marriage. I don't like that, right? You've heard that, like, oh, the sex sense when you get married, the sex sense. I have found the sex actually increases. Marriage makes women horny. It's true. Guys, if you want to get a girl horny, propose to her. <laughs> you don't have to marry her, just propose. <laughs> She will sleep with you three times a day just to get you off her so she can Google wedding dresses online, okay? <laughs> Every woman in here has masturbated to say yes to the dress. <laughs> uh, Vera Wang, Vera Wang. <laughs> I was on a budget, I had Vera Wong. Um, that's my cousin. <laughs> she made my dress. <laughs> Uh, we've been married for a while, but you know, we're still in the honeymoon phase, but sometimes something will happen. Like he'll just, oh, he'll get on my nerves. Like he won't clip his toenails and he'll scrape his leg on me in the bed or he'll fart and I'll just snap. I'm like, I'm stuck with this motherfucker for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I start thinking about stuff I never thought I would think about. Like I thought about becoming a prostitute. <laughs> Don't touch me, let me tell you what happened. So we were making love. And then he finished and he rolled over and fell asleep and started snoring. I was like, oh my God, I could have just made a hundred dollars. What the heck? <laughs> I'm all, get up, get up and do your job. His job is eating pussy for you guys who don't know what his job is. That's his job. <laughs> uh, we don't have any kids yet, um, but we don't use any birth control. Um, we just go to Chuck E. Cheese once a week. <laughs> couple parents, okay. <laughs> right, Chuck E. Cheese, McDonald's Play Place, Walmart toy aisle, it's all the same, right? Single moms crying in the bathroom, dad smoking weed in the parking lot. <laughs> My tubes are tying themselves. I'm all, don't touch me. Don't touch me, babe, don't touch me. <laughs> I gotta give it up for him though. He's very brave, he married a Vietnamese woman. I don't know if you guys know the stereotype, Vietnamese women were crazy. It's true, it was actually proven right here in the US about six months ago, a Vietnamese woman cut off her husband's dick. Oh. Yes, I'm like, not Chinese, not Korean, not Japanese, Vietnamese, I gotta write a joke about this. I Googled it, this is the second Vietnamese woman to cut off her husband's dick in six months. <laughs> I told my hubby he brought me flowers the next day. He's like, I love you so much, baby, I love you. He was like hiding the knives. I'm like, what's going on? Why are you doing that? I love you, babe. <laughs> a lot of you might know about Vietnamese culture, right? More than our people. We have this delicious soup called pho. Has anyone ever had it? Yeah, yeah a couple people. So good. So for those of you who don't know, we take all the weird stuff on the cow white people don't want to eat and we put it in a soup. <laughs> the lower the number on the menu, the weirder the item. <laughs> Number 38 is just beef testicles. It's so, it's just so good, so good. I am a huge foodie, I love food, but no matter where you go in the country, there's always some like annoying person from like Chicago or New York like looking for pizza. Have you guys noticed that, right? Like my friends, oh, pizza, I know the pizza. You're like, what the heck, right? Oh, you haven't lived till you've had a New York hot dog. Like I haven't lived till I've had a Hebrew national sold off a middle cart by a Middle Eastern guy with dirt under his nails. <laughs> This is the same jerk I took to get Vietnamese food. He's like, ah, da, 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 da. Vietnamese people, they eat dog. I'm all, first of all, dog is delicious. <laughs> Second of all, Vietnamese people, we don't just eat dog, we eat dog and cat and squirrel and monkey and rabbit. Like, get it right. <laughs> if it moves, we got the chopsticks out, okay. <laughs> That was a stereotype, that's a negative stereotype. That's not true, I hate that stereotype. That's one of my most hated stereotypes. The second stereotype I hate the most 
about Asians is that Asian women are submissive. Have you guys heard this? Oh my God, it drives me crazy. I was dating a, college, a guy in college one time and he was like, oh, I heard Asian girls are submissive. I'm all, have you ever met an Asian woman? <laughs> right? Ladies, you go to the nail salon, they're like in your face. They're like, you want a gel? You want, what's wrong with your eye? You're ugly, you're ugly. You're like, oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm ugly. I'm sorry. Right? Has anyone ever been to a dim sum restaurant? Oh my God, Chinese dim sum? The dumplings, they push it on you like crack. They're like, you want a barbecue pork bun? You want a chicken feet? You want a chicken feet? You're like, I don't want the chicken feet. I Asian women are aggressive as hell, like submissive. Where the guys get these stereotypes from? I think these guys are watching way too much Asian porn. That's the only thing that makes sense. Because you watch Asian porn, it's always the same thing. Kill a little Asian girl with pigtails and schoolgirl outfit. <laughs> me so honey, me love you long time. <laughs> She's like having sex with some average white guy. She's like, it's so big, it's so big. <laughs> Like, it's not that big. That's like an average dick. <laughs> but the best, right? The best is orgasm, right? It sounds like she's choking on golf balls. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what is going on over there? <laughs> That's why when I was single, I'd try to break the stereotype, right? Whenever I would date white guys, I'd make them go down on me for like all of the wars and stuff, right? <laughs> oh, Korean War! <laughs> Fall of Saigon! <laughs> Hiroshima! <laughs> Reparations. <laughs> they couldn't leave my bedroom till they're like crying, shaking in the corner. <laughs> they like a POW. Ladies, you can do this too. You go on a date with a guy, you're making out for the first time, he starts doing the head tap tap. You just do the head tap tap right back, all right? I call it the karate chop. <laughs> Lick it. <laughs> it's a good arm workout. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore because I'm married, so I don't have to do the dating thing. I hated dating, I hated it. I was single for so long, my friends were like, Rosa, you're trying to be an actress, a comedian, you should find a rich Jewish producer. I was like, all right. So I went on J-Date. I'm not a J. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't find a nice Jewish boy on J-Date. This was my headline. I'm like, hey guys, every Woody Allen needs a own ye, huh? <laughs> Date me or adopt me, what's up? <laughs> nobody, nobody. <laughs> I did everything, man. Match.com, eHarmony, Craigslist. <laughs> Casual encounters. <laughs> I get a lot of creepy guys on Craigslist with like yellow fever. So yellow fever guys that only want to date Asian girls. They want to play these like weird role-playing games with you in the bedroom. Not Dungeons and Dragons nerds, okay. <laughs> games like uh, executive and secretary, right? Doctor and nurse. Except for I was a really bad nurse because I'm not Filipino, so. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> Couple of you have health insurance, okay. <laughs> the rest of you, you don't know about the Filipino nurses? Okay. <laughs> this one guy, he tried to tie me up. He wanted to play Vietnam soldier and refugee. I was like, oh my God. He tried to tie me up. My brother jumped out from under the bed and stabbed him in the face, right? <laughs> Charlie in the sheets. <laughs> I, thought, I dated all sorts of guys. I dated Latino men, Middle Eastern guys. I did Middle Eastern I did this Armenian guy. He, oh my God, Armenian guys, hairiest guys in the world, okay? I did an Armenian guy, his happy trail went all the way up his neck. <laughs> Down his back into the next room. <laughs> I think that's why Middle Eastern women go, la, 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 because they're choking on a hairball. <laughs> I called him my little rug. <laughs> It was so soft and furry. <laughs> Middle Eastern women are the most beautiful women in the world, though. Oh, I'm so jealous. Like Kim Kardashian, right? She's like skinny with a ghetto booty. What the heck? But she's kind of Americanized. Like when I went overseas to perform for the troops, I went to the Middle East, I, I saw nothing but ninjas, right? <laughs> the burkas. I'm a feminist. I was offended. I'm like, oh my God, they're covered up from head to toe. That's horrible. But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, ladies, they're covered up from head to toe. You don't have to wear makeup. 
pluck your eyebrows, shave. You don't even know what your wife looks like till you marry her. You think you're getting Kim Kardashian, the burqa comes off, it's Ahmed, okay? <laughs> smart, smart. One guy can have multiple wives. I'm a feminist, I was like, that's disgusting. But then I saw that show Sister Wives and they interviewed the women. They were so happy. They were like, I got my best girlfriend with me. I never need a babysitter. If I don't want to sleep with him, I send in wife number two. That's smart. They interviewed the man broken down inside. He's like, I got three bitches nagging me. <laughs> you could never lose an argument, ladies. You got your best girlfriends with you, right? You're like, oh, is that what I said, Sean? Oh yeah, is that what I said? Oh, okay. Emily, Maribel, Peyton, is that what I said? <laughs> you got backup. <laughs> Sorry. Never want too many women in your life. <laughs> but yeah, I did all sorts of guys. I was like the United Nations pussy. It was open for business. <laughs> I dated a lot of brothers, black guys. Oh man, the stereotypes were true, ladies. <laughs> Black guys love to mess with Asian girls. You don't believe me? Go out to the nightclub. Just watch. I was out dancing with my girlfriends. Psst, what's up, China? Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou. <laughs> Lucy Lou. <laughs> I was dancing. This guy came up to me and started grinding up on me. You feel a 10 inch pull poking, you get scared. Okay, I'm all like, oh <laughs> This was his pickup line. He's like, is it true what they say about Asian girls? I'm like, what do they say about Asian girls? <laughs> He goes, that your coochie slanted sideways like your eyes? I'm all, oh. <laughs> is that a stereotype I don't know about? I was like, is my coochie slanted sideways like my eyes? No, <laughs> but I do shoot out rice when I come, so I don't know why. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Sometimes it's sticky rice. <laughs> That was mean, that was kind of mean, that was mean. I was like, dude, seriously? So I had to get it back. I'm like, is it true what they say about the brothers? He's like, why, yes it is. I'm like, good, then give me my wallet back. <laughs> oh, we dated for a year. <laughs> it was crazy. I dated a really crazy guy. I dated a bipolar guy. Oh my God, don't do that. He never took his meds, he was the worst. He was so crazy, when I tried to break up with him, he tried to run me over with his car. Yeah, but he drove a Kia, so it didn't really do much damage. <laughs> a Kia? <laughs> Get a truck or something. I was really upset. I called my girlfriend crying. I'm like, he's crazy. He tried to run me over with his car. Then I got excited. I'm like, oh my God, he tried to run me over with his car. <laughs> I must have some good pussy. <laughs> Shit is tight. <laughs> it's like, if I can't have her, no one can. <laughs> I did a lot of crazy guys. I did a lot of crazy guys, but I, uh, <laughs> I did that joke. I was performing at a private party in the hood, and okay, it was a barbecue. There's no private parties in the hood. But <laughs> this brother came up to me. He's like, "Girl, you gotta watch what you say. This is the hood." I'm like, "This is not the hood." Okay, I live in the hood. I live in the barrio. That's the Mexican ghetto. Hood. That's the hood. Okay, 13 people in the studio apartment next to me. Juan Carlos and Jesus are running from the cops. And INS, okay? I was like, that's the hood. <laughs> I love my neighborhood though, I never need to leave. There's food everywhere, right? Mexicans selling corn for no reason, right? <laughs> the corn with the mayonnaise and a tapatio and a chopstick. Sometimes people eat the corn and throw the chopsticks on the ground. I gotta pick them back up. I'm like, it's oh, a good chopstick. <laughs> I love it. I'm in the good part of the barrio though, I got a tamale woman. Yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, tamale woman, little Mexican grandma selling homemade tamales. I didn't know about the tamale woman. I thought she was looking for some girl named tamale. <laughs> she was up there, tamale, tamale. I'm all, where's this girl tamale? I started looking for her. I was like, tamale, tamale, your mama looking for you, tamale. That's how I got the nickname Chinita Loca. <laughs> I 
I love it. I am the daughter of immigrants. I am the daughter of immigrants, and I love immigrants. I love this country. I love everything, and I want to bring people together with laughter. That's why I make fun of everyone, because I think that we're too divisive, and we're too divided, and we need to bring each other love and bring each other together, and that's why I do that, because I think it's just there's too much hate right now. I think if we can all laugh at each other, then we can also hug each other and get over our problems, and that's how I feel. And I just, I don't like the hate, there's too much hate right now. Like there was a neo-Nazi rally, and I was watching this rally, I was like, how do we solve this problem? How do we solve the hate? Like watching these guys, these like young white guys, they're very young, like 18, and they're anti-immigrant and they hate. I was watching it, I was like, how can we solve this? I'm like, oh, they've obviously never had sex with an immigrant. That's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> We don't need a wall, we just need some slutty South American chicks to take one for the team. <laughs> right? That would solve racism and immigration. Is that you wanna get into the country, Consuela? You gotta fuck Billy Bob. He's a little close-minded. Open up his mind. He's kinda, he's close-minded. <laughs> we need more love, right? <laughs> But you guys can tell my parents are really proud of my stand-up comedy career. You know, I always thank them every show because without them, this would not be ha happening at all. And I always thank uh, my older sister. Got to give it up for her for failing out of medical school through 0.5 GPA. <laughs> the one dumb Asian. <laughs> and uh, my brother, I always give it up for him for uh, coming out of the closet with a big cock in his mouth. So, <laughs> yes. Setting the standards nice and low for Rosie. I'm like, mom and dad, I want to tell dick jokes in bars for a living. They're like, go ahead, honey, we've given up on life. Just <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, my brother is a Gaijin. He is a Gaijin. Oh, y'all don't know about the Gaijins? Gay plus Asian, hey! <laughs> my brother is a Gaijin. I'm not making fun of him. He is a Gaijin. He is like tight, hot pink shirts, skipping through the streets, singing show tunes like male camel toe gay, all right? <laughs> He came out of the closet, one cock in each hand. He was <laughs> hiding in a closet with a glass door, okay? <laughs> he came out, he's like, I'm gay! We're like, we know. <laughs> We've known. Can you put one foot back in? Just halfway, just halfway. <laughs> he is very, very gay. <laughs> I love him so much, I love him, and um, he's with his guy, he doesn't live in this country, and um, you know, I talk about him in my act, and whatever your viewpoint on it, if you're like Catholic, and you're like against, whatever, just say, hey, I'm Catholic, don't be an ignorant idiot, okay? I was talking about gay marriage in my act before it was legal in the US, and this redneck comes up to me after the show, he's like, well, if we let the facts get married, what's next, marrying your dog? I'm all, no. <laughs> What's next is multiple marriages. What about the Mormons? Then little kids, then dogs. Dogs would never be next. Like why would dogs? <laughs> Stupid, right? <laughs> why would dogs be next? That doesn't, that's not even the order, right? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> but then I started thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute. And I was like, okay, marrying your dog, that would be kind of cool, right? Any dog lovers, you go home, they're always happy to see you, right? <laughs> like wagging their little tails. Married people know they make the best husbands ever. They don't talk, right? <laughs> Ladies, you get lonely, just put some peanut butter downtown. <laughs> they keep licking all night. <laughs> Guys, come on, I'm joking. I've got a schnauzer, he's got a beard, he kind of looks like a person. <laughs> anyway, I told you guys from the get-go, I like to break stereotypes. Think about it, I'm the first Vietnamese person of all time to have my dog eat me, okay? <laughs> all right. You guys have been awesome. I wanted to dedicate this performance to my dad. Rest in peace. You guys are amazing. I'm Rosie Tran. Yeah.